Since we're getting closer to the summertime and inspired by Adidas ad from a few weeks ago, we're talking body hair today. the history of this practice we understand immediately that it has changed uh, over time there were times in the history when uh, women had to remove it completely from their body other times when they could uh, leave it because it was considered uh, sexy and uh, this leads us to believe and to understand that uh, body hair removal is not a norm, it's not something that needs to be imposed on the whole society, but it's actually a product of one time and uh, it's a fashion. It is believed that even men in prehistorian times removed all of his body hair. As you can imagine, they had a lot of body hair and their enemies would grab them by it. So to prevent that, they would pluck it out. I can only imagine that it was completely painful. Razors made out of copper were used in Egypt and India 300 BC. In Egypt, women removed all of their body hair, even from their heads, and their pubic hair was considered to be uncivilized. Even men removed their beards uh, because only slaves and servants had it. So it was a trait of a class. In Egypt, during the rule of Cleopatra, there was also uh, this mixture of sugar, water and lemon that was used, today's predecessor of waxing. And in ancient Rome, uh, women also removed most of their body hair. And the interesting thing is that body hair removal was not a habit related to the gender roles, because we know today that Caesar also removed his body hair. In the Middle Ages, Queen Elizabeth started completely new fashion. She plucked her eyebrows and certain parts of her hair because it was considered very beautiful for women to have large foreheads and a very long face. A very interesting thing is also that women did not remove the body hair from the rest of their body, it was only their head. <gasps> the first razors for men appeared in the 18th century and we believe that uh, women also use them sometimes uh, stealing them from their husbands but there was not a strict norm imposed on women in the 19th century it was expected from women to remove all of the body hair that could be seen uh, which was only face because of the fashion of the time women covered most of their bodies with clothes and pubic hair was considered to be something very sensual, so it was not expected from women to remove it, as well as uh, the hair from the armpits that was considered as something very, very sexy. It is interesting that women were not expected to remove any body hair except from their faces, but still on the artwork from the 19th century we can see women uh, like porcelain, completely uh, shaven. From the 19th century uh, there are certain women that start removing their body hair and those were models, prostitutes and actresses. Now, women actually started removing their body hair at the beginning of the 20th century and the trigger for it was apparently Charles Darwin's book, uh, released in 1871, that stated that more attractive people are the ones that have less hair, that it's simply natural selection and this was the reason why people started uh, viewing body hair in a different way. of the 20th century also few different things happened. So there are three main industries that influenced uh, the way women uh, viewed their bodies. There was fashion industry, so fashion changed hugely. There was the razors industry and there was also uh, the magazines industry. The first time that a completely shaven woman uh, appeared in a magazine was in Harper's Bazaar in 19. 14, and then the first razors for women by Gillette uh, were released in 1915. Except for these three uh, huge industries, uh, there were also new cultural and social practices. 
uh, people started going to the seaside, uh, to rivers, to bathe and women started showing more of their bodies. First they had swimming suits that uh, were covering more of the parts of the body than today's swimming suits but they were still uncovering their legs which was a novelty at the beginning of the 20th century. And there was also uh, viewing the hygiene in a completely new and different way. Yes, people did not smell as good as they do today. We started understanding that being clean has to do with health and that we have to take care more of the hygiene of our bodies. One of those things was body hair removal and a view that if we don't have any hair that we will be cleaner. This is also the period of removing all the animal traits from our bodies and a complete deodorization. Does that actually mean that today men that have body hair are not clean? Or was this practice actually made only for women. Women used tights, for example, to hide their uh, body hair on their legs. Uh, and uh, during the Second World War, there were not a lot of tights and they started shaving massively uh, because of this reason. Now, it is considered that in the 60s, 98% of women in the United States shaved their legs, which is huge and um, also starting to shave certain parts of our bodies prepared us also for uh, more developments in the fashion industry like mini skirt. How did we actually start trimming, shaving or waxing our pubic hair? In 1947 new version of the swimming suit appeared and it was uncovering our pubic hair so that's how women started trimming it. Another trigger for complete body hair removal was apparently also a photo in Playboy magazine that appeared in 1950 where a woman was uh, completely shaven. And it's not like it's coming at least from a woman's magazine, it's coming from Playboy. We will have to wait until the 21st century for women to be able to leave their body hair. Even today, a lot of women that leave it receive even death threats, like it was the case of the Adidas model a few years back. It was a huge scandal. On the other hand, bravo Adidas. As we have seen on one hand, uh, women could start liberating their bodies from uh, huge garments, but then on the other hand, they could release their body, but it had to look in a certain way, it could not have any hair. We got rid of one burden, but we put another one on ourselves. And today we cannot deny that the whole body hair removal industry profits off of a certain image that we women have of our bodies. This video is not there to show you and to convince you to remove or not to remove your body hair. It is there simply to show you that body hair removal was uh, very different throughout the history and we as people tend to believe that we advanced over time so that also prehistorian uh, people were hairy and that over a period of time we lost all of our hair when actually there were certain periods of time in the history when people would remove all of their body hair where men removed all of their body hair then they left it again then there were no norms so it changed quite a lot if you like this video please subscribe uh, click like comment share the video why not all of these things help me be more visible on youtube and help other people interested in the same topics uh, get to these kinds of videos thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next week's video